Hello, I am very honored to be here with you um, because I used to think that TED speakers always were amazing people, genius, uh, the director of the Philharmonica and stuff. And I'm just a 30 year old uh, Mexican architect that is very happy to be here with you sharing some ideas. Um, lastly, I have been thinking a lot about the concept of paradise, which is very difficult. W what is paradise? And because I am not a very religious people, I went to my own God, which is Google. So I Googled paradise, and this happened. Uh, at the beginning, we have Jan Bruegel, paradise. This is 16th century the concept of paradise in 16th century. We've got a very new age, psychedelic paradise. That's Google, that, that's not me, that's Google. We've got um, a very beautiful, nice picture. A very strange, beautiful picture. And if, if we remember the things we just have seen, um, they have something in common. The concept of paradise, it is full of nature. The idea of paradise is full of nature. And um, nature, as we have seen it, is a, a perfect cycle, okay? And suddenly, something happened. The, the amazing thing is that paradise, it is, it is not an idea. That was exactly how the world was. We had a paradise. And suddenly, human came and... We transformed paradise into cities. But I'm not here to talk about bad things about cities. Actually, I love cities. I live in Mexico City, which is one of the biggest cities in the world, the most polluted, and I love it. I, I, I cannot imagine myself living in another place but a crowded, very polluted city. So the thing is not talking about bad things about cities, but we must admit that cities have some side effects. Um, one of the most important side effects for me is the loss of nature. We have lost everything, every little piece of nature. So um, the idea of my studio, Verde Vertical, is to recover this nature, to, to recover paradise. Okay? So um, it, is, it is very... Um, the amount of nature that we must have, um, it varies in different ideas. So some people say that every, each one of us must have at least 250 square meters of green area. Other people said, no, no, that's impossible. We're not going to make it. So let's keep it into 150 square meters of green area. Suddenly, the UN came and said, United Nations, no? No, it is impossible. So the, if you have less than 16 meters of green area, you, you live in a city with lots of problems. And after that, the World Health Organization went to the UN and said, for at least once in your life, be realistic. It, that's not possible. That's not possible. Um, so the, the new standard, the minimum of green area in a city, it is nine. Nine square meters of green area per capita, okay? The bad news is that we don't even have those nine square meters. We are way below. Not only Mexico City, that we have 3.7, but most of cities. I, I, was, um, I was asking uh, Rogerio, and he said that Sao Paulo has around six. So we have a green area problem. And the, the, the worst part of the problem 
is that we don't have any space. We don't have any empty space. So we needed to find a very creative solutions to recover this paradise, this nature. So um, the solution was very simple. If we take a look at this T, okay, it has more area in its size okay, than in its base. So there is more Mexico City in the walls than in its base. So why don't we use the, the walls of the city to recover these green areas? So the idea is that. But we have very um, technical problems because, because people used to think that plants need soil to grow. That's a completely lie, okay? Whoever tells you that plants need soil is lying, okay? Because plants need four things, which is light, air, water, and nutrients. So we can, with a hydroponic system, we can, sorry, this, it, that, that was part of the presentation, okay? It was a very important part, okay, to make it nice, okay? So um, we can start using hydroponic systems, okay? We can start planting the walls of the city, which I'm gonna just make here. This is New York, okay? Actually, that was like the Seagram building in New York. And we can keep on planting New York and recovering New York's green areas, okay? And this is called hydroponic, okay? And the thing about um, the, we have we have been doing this in Mexico City. We have, uh, we have done more than 300 different projects, which um, we're very proud of, okay? So we are recovering green areas in Mexico City um, using existing buildings. I'm gonna show you some of the projects we have done. And, and green areas are very good because uh, plants are very smart, okay? Because through photosynthesis, okay, they transform carbon dioxide into oxygen, okay? So they give us air. And uh, someone was saying that the, one of the most um, danger, um, the, the more death was caused by pollution. So plants can transform this pollution into oxygen. So that's what we are doing in, in Mexico City. But we felt that we, we don't need, we don't live out of, out of air, only air. We need more things, okay? We need food. So why don't we, instead of only planting New York with beautiful plants, why don't we use eatable plants? Okay, so we started growing not only plants that give us oxygen, but also food. The food problem is, is terrible, okay? To give you an idea, it, um, that the amount of kilometers that each food has to travel from the place it's grown to the place it's eaten, okay? So that distance doesn't um, mean only transportation. It also means energy, refrigeration, packing. And when, we, when, when these plants get to the city, sometimes we just go like, I'm not hungry, I'm not eating it. Because we don't realize what this represented. This uh, represents a lot of energy. So what we are doing is not vertical gardens, but vertical farms, okay? So um, I think that our uh, generation, it is not about saying things. 
My father used to have lots of ideas, like the hippie generation wanted to change everything, and they didn't do anything. So our generation is not about saying, it's about doing. So um, we... <laughs> Thank you. So our idea is not saying things, but doing uh, things. So we did our first experiment with vertical farming, which was very nice. So there's the site, there's the construction, and then we plant 25 lettuce, okay, per square meter, and suddenly, because the hydroponic system works, so they start growing beautifully, and we have beautiful lettuce growing in Mexico City. So the idea is very simple. We have to reduce the amount, the amount of food that we take into the city. We, the, mo the city has to copy paradise, which was a completely closed system. Okay? So um, for this to grow, okay, um, remember four things the plants need. They need light that we have here. They need air, which is still free. We don't have to pay for the air, okay? The, for the light, also there is no tax but now. We, we, probably later we have to pay for the, for the light. So light, air, water, and nutrients. And the thing about nutrients, plants need to eat. People used to think that if you put some water in plants, they're happy. No, that's another lie. Okay? They need food. What do plants eat? They eat nitrogeno, fósforo, potassio. Okay? That's macronutrients and some micronutrients. Okay? So the thing about nutrients is that they're very expensive in hydroponics. So we had to invite okay, some friends. Okay? These friends are called tilapias. Here we have some friends, okay, as you can see here. Um, and wh what we are doing with this fish, okay, is we give the fish the waste of food that we produced, okay? So those fishes are being fed by that food, okay? And their waste is transformed into uh, nitritos, okay? And then into nitratos, and nitratos are perfect food. For, for the vegetables. So we are not only producing fresh uh, b vitamins and minerals, but also we are producing good protein. So the idea of this is um, to copy paradise, to close all roads, okay? So we can produce all the food that we consume in the cities within the city, okay? And the, the thing about this, this is called aquaponics. This is called hydroponics. So the aqua, water, hydro, water. We need water. And the specialists here in the audience must say, well, we've got a problem because there is no enough water in cities. And if we take a look at this graph, okay, red is terrible, okay? Yellow is less terrible, but also terrible. So we don't have any more water in cities. Actually, if we take a look around down here, uh, even though Brazil is full of water, Sao Paulo has a big water problem. Uh, we don't have any more water. So um, how are, are we going to get all this hydroponic and aquaponic system working if we don't have any water? So we went again to nature, and we asked nature, hey, nature, how do, how do you get your water? And the answer was plants. So if we, if we take a look at this, this is a time-lapse video of the Brazilian rainforest. What is happening there, it's a process called evapotranspiration. And evapotranspiration, in a more scientific way, plants are very intelligent because they take the water and minerals from the root, they take it all the way up to the leaf, 
and through photosynthesis, they transform the minerals and the light and the carbon dioxide into glucose, and they liberate pure water. Um, for this, I, I want you to make an experiment at home tonight. Uh, you're going to take a plant, okay, and you're going to put a plastic bag in it. First, you're going to irrigate it with water, okay? And you're going to get to see the amount of water it's being evapotranspirated through the plants. And the second phase of the experiment is you're going to take the same plant, but you're going to irrigate it with Coca-Cola, okay? For representation as dirty water, I don't have anything against Coca-Cola, but it's dirty enough, okay? Um, we irrigate it with dirty water, okay? And the plants have the ability to understand how to take from the roots nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and take it all the way up to the leaves and evapotranspirate, not Coca-Cola, but pure water. G do the experiment. And exactly that is what we have here. We have Sao Paulo dirty water, which is fiction, that Coca-Cola, okay? And it goes all the way through the hydroponic system to the plants, and as you can see here, okay, there's a cloud coming outside, but we don't let that cloud get into the atmosphere. So we capture that water, and when it um, gets colder, it condensed. And that condensation, we recover it, and we are transforming uh, Sao Paulo's drainage into drinkable water. That's what we're doing in Mexico City. That's a uh, drink, uh, portable, uh, we call it, the cloud factory, okay? So that's being irrigated by Mexico City's drainage, okay? The plants have the ability to take the nutrients. They're very happy. They evapotranspirate water, and it condenses, and it goes all the way down into the lower part. So we take that part, and we are transforming that, that we're transforming there. Uh, that condensed water into pure drinkable water. So uh, you, can, you, can, you can joke, but you have to do the Coca-Cola experiment so you believe me, okay? But otherwise, you're going to say, like, oh, Fernando drank Mexico City drainage. No, do it, okay? It is very important for me for you to do it, okay? Um, so. Back to reality. We live there. We have transformed the cities. And the, the amazing thing is that we have the technology. Most of the TED Talkers have beautiful ideas. Everyone is doing best, better things than the, the last before. So the ideas and the technology is there. So it is not a problem about technology. It is a problem about morals. Are we ready? to change the way we live, we cannot expect to get to another place. If we do the same thing, we are, we are thinking, oh, the world is terrible and uh, we are getting worse and worse and worse, but we are not doing anything to change. So if we want to get a better result, we have to swift and do a, a dramatic change to, to get other different results. And the, the final question is, do you think you are ready to change the way we live to get to a better future? I think we are. Thank you very much.